This is Support Jeffco Kids with Carrie Dahlman, social studies teacher from Pomona High School, former president of the Jefferson County Education Association, and current president of the Colorado Education Association. And Jonna Levine with Support Jeffco Kids. We've had a lot of inquiries on our website and from parents who are concerned about what fact finding is. And we're here to an answer those questions. So Carrie, thank you very much for spending time with us today and answering some of these questions. And I think one of the first places I want to start is with that last Board of Ed meeting where they moved the uh, placeholder amount from 11 million to 18 million. To me, that sounds very positive, like it's definite that the teachers are going to get an increase. No? Uh, no, I, I don't. We cannot count on that. And the reason being is when you have uh, the Jefferson County Education Association's bargaining team and the district's bargaining team uh, make an agreement and both sides sign off on that tentative agreement, the teachers ratified it and the board refuses to approve it, we cannot, absolutely cannot count on um, a compensation increase for educators. You know, this is the first time since the 60s that both sides have reached an agreement in Jefferson County and the board has failed to approve the ratified contract. So what are the next steps? I'm hearing a lot about fact-finding. Is that the next step and what does that really mean? Well, fact-finding is the next step and it's uh, spoken to in the contract between the teachers and the district. What fact-finding is, is um, an opportunity to bring in a neutral third party who will uh, basically hold a hearing where both sides prevent, uh, present their evidence and, and the fact-finder will hear testimony. And then the fact-finder will review that testimony and issue a written opinion of fact. And the board can choose to follow the fact-finder's recommendations or not. Because Colorado doesn't have a collective bargaining law, the fact finder's opinion really is an advisory opinion in the end. Okay, so who participates in, in this fact finding from the Teachers Association and who participates from the district? So both sides will have uh, representation. Uh, it could be an attorney or some other individual that they've selected and uh, both sides will be able to uh, call witnesses in to testify uh, and both sides will be able to present uh, written documentation and evidence um, that supports their case. Are there any decision makers that participate though? I mean is there somebody like from the district that will be able to make a decision that's involved in this or where does it go from that? Well the ultimate decision makers are the Jeffco Board of Education. Uh, they could be called to testify in, in the uh, fact-finding hearing, um, but ultimately a final decision, once the fact-finder's report comes out, is up to the Board of Education. So you mentioned before a neutral fact-finder. So does this, how does that come about? Does this, you just find somebody off the street that you think is a neutral party that will be able to do this? or? Where does this fact finder, this neutral fact finder come from? What's, what's Actually, involved? there's a list of fact finding hearing officers, uh, and so both sides will have an opportunity to remove names from that list and eventually whittle it down to one person uh, that they'll both agree to have as a fact finder. All right, so does, he come, does this person come of their own goodwill and volunteer their time? or are they getting paid? I think you see where I'm going here. Well, yes, they absolutely are paid, and, and the cost of a fact finder varies somewhat, but you can pretty much count on a $1,000 per day expense just for the fact finder. That doesn't count the expenses on both sides for representation. So who pays for the fact finder then? Does, uh, does one side or the other absorb the, all the cost? Who pays for this cost? Under the JCEA negotiated agreement, the contract calls for both sides to split the cost. So if the final bill at the end of the day is $15,000, both the teachers association and the district would be responsible for paying $7,500 each. So, that's, so essentially that's money that, that the, 
the teachers association is going to pay and that's money that the district is going to pay I'm going to say that the district that could have been putting into kids in the classroom instead of this extra move. Certainly, it's it's money that could have paid for a diff, for an additional para educator in a school or a different interventionist. Um, it is money that could have been invested in the classroom. Okay. So for my own information, I just want to circle back to this again. So the res, so the results of the fact finding are not non-binding. They are non-binding because Colorado does not have a collective bargaining law. So that means we draw a line back to that 18 million placeholder. Essentially that means that that, that extra money that's put in there, that placeholder, there's, there's still been no, there's no definite that, that that's money that's going to go to the teachers. No. Okay. All right. Well, this is sounding like a lot of fun so far. You know, ultimately what fact-finding is about, it's a, it's a last opportunity for both sides to reach a mutual agreement. Um, what's unusual truly about this particular fact-finding is that both sides signed off on an agreement. The district's negotiators signed off on the agreement. The association's negotiators signed off on an agreement. So what's really unusual is that when that agreement that was signed off by both parties goes to the Board of Education, that the Board of Education does not approve it. And what's even more odd about this, I mean, we really are in uncharted waters. Typically, um, when you have a signed agreement, uh, or you don't even, and you can't reach agreement, you go to fact-finding. Well. There's a lot of issues in that negotiated agreement that weren't in dispute. There's a couple of issues that the board indicated that they had significant concerns with. Ordinarily, you would just take those couple of issues to fact-finding, and in this particular instance, what the board has chosen to do is take the entire agreement to fact-finding. And that's really unheard of, and that's certainly going to draw out the fact-finding process instead of a, a day or two day long hearing, we're, we're probably looking at a seven to 10 day hearing. Okay, so that would go back to, because I recall in that board meeting that the CFO mentioned more than just a couple of times her, I'm gonna say concern regarding the board sending the full agreement rather than just a couple of items to fact finding. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that you're absolutely right. I, both the the district's attorney and Lori Gillis, the chief financial officer, questioned the board uh, to be sure of their intent on several occasions, and it it appeared to me from watching that they were trying to give the board a clue that you don't take the full agreement, you take the issues that are still in contention, and it was very clear that um, board president Ken Witt. I uh, had the full intention of taking the entire agreement, uh, which is frankly, again, unusual because the the fact that the fact finder is going to find is these issues are not in dispute. They reached agreement. And in fact, when the board decided to not approve the agreement, those things still weren't, um, were still something that they agreed to. It's just a couple of issues that they disagreed with. So again, I think it really speaks to the, the board's um, lack of understanding of the bargaining process mm -hmm. and, and inability to take advice from people who know how that process works. All right, so Carrie, I have, I have one, one more question for you, and maybe this is something that you can't answer. But assuming, we're going to, we're going to go with the worst case scenario and that um, no decision is made even after the fact finding results. What is the next step? What does that mean? What does that mean for our teachers? What does it mean for the district? And maybe you can't answer that. I don't know. Well, options that are available, uh, the Teachers Association could take the district to court for breaching the contract because uh, we still have a contract in place. Uh, it's our belief that the um, memorandums of understanding that had, pre had been signed the previous year would expire and we would go back to decreasing class size which means hiring more teachers and we would go back to the salary schedule that is in the in the contract 
So though, that's an option, taking the district to court. Um, obviously, we'd prefer not to go that, that route. We would like to have an agreement and we'd like to be sure that we're supporting our classroom teachers so that Jeffco remains a great district. So essentially, I guess it's sounding like our teachers are just kind of left out there hanging. Well, they, they certainly are in limbo for the remainder of the summer and part of the fall. Um, time will tell whether or not the board decides to follow the fact finder's opinion. Uh, but, you know, every day more of the Jeffco community is beginning to understand what's happening in Jeffco Public Schools and what's happening as a direct result of the actions the board has taken. And I believe eventually there will be enough public pressure on the Board of Education to force them to do the right thing by Jeffco students and that's support a quality teaching force. And that's something they're not doing currently. Okay. I think I think you've answered my questions. Is there anything else that you think that uh, folks who are normally not involved in any of this process, even teachers, I think, some of this information is new to them. Is there anything else that you'd like to add that you think that they want to know? Well, you know, I just want people to understand that as teachers, our primary goal is to get results for students. And to do that, we need to be supported. Uh, we voluntarily took a 3% pay cut when times were tough. And we have teachers now who are who are great and they're deciding to leave the profession because they just don't feel supported by their school district and we want to be successful at what we're doing and to do that we need support from uh, Board of Education in Jefferson County. Thank you Carrie. Thank you Jonna. Excellent. Thank you Jonna Levine for this interview and thank you Carrie Dahlman. You're welcome.